The next speaker is Anders Weiland, CEO at Cordate Medical. Welcome. Thank you, Nicolina. For those uh, who hasn't followed the company before, I will do a little bit of repeat. Uh, that could be good to know some, some uh, uh, aspects of the company that uh, is necessary to understand this company. The headlines uh, for this short presentation today, I will uh, go through the clinical study on chronic migraine, which is a pivotal study for us that was concluded in August, also presented at the Congress in London in September. Mostly I, I will spend time on our focus markets and, and the, the building of proof of concept in our exit building. And we'll touch a little bit on the recently uh, concluded the uh, rights issue uh, that brought us uh, capital for, for uh, the next uh, part of our strategic plan. Um, but a little bit of repeat again. For the, what, what is migraine? Um, it could be good to know a little bit of the, of the lay on the land here. Um, it's basically so that anyone can have migraine. Uh, and a lot of people have had or has migraine uh, as we speak. Uh, it comes and goes through adult life and actually early on also in, in childhood and, and adolescent years. Uh, approximately 15% uh, uh, would have migraine in the epi episodic uh, category, which is uh, rare to often, basically. Um, the, the part that we are focusing most on uh, is the chronic migraine group. And you are defined as a chronic migrainer if you have more than 15 days of headache per month, whereof eight con uh, consist of, of uh, migraine episodes or migraine attacks. Um, so it's a widespread uh, uh, condition and, and it, it hits a lot of people in various types and forms. Um, so, how many would that be? Well, 15% in average on any population has some sort of migraine. Um, it's twice as common or more in, uh, amongst women than amongst men. Um, and when, when we talk about the chronic migraine group, it's, it's around 2% in any given population. Um, and that would be 150, 160 million people in the world that has chronic migraine. Uh, the normal treatment is uh, common drugs like painkillers pain uh, to, to deal with the, the, the headache in the acute phase. When that doesn't help anymore, there are more um, progressive uh, specialized medications that, that can be administered um, up to very specialized uh, migraine drugs that are quite costly. And cost is something that is very pronounced in, in the migraine uh, segment. Uh, an average Swedish chronic migrainer uh, would cost 12,000 uh, euros. Sometimes that goes up to a lot more. 80% of that is productivity loss um, because you can't function in school or at your work and you are away for a day or two. And uh, about 20% is um, drugs or, or healthcare in general. So it's a very, very costly condition for the society, therefore an important matter. So uh, what we do at Cordate as a strategy is that we're uh, following a relatively simple exit strategy. Uh, this company is built to be sold and we do that based on three pillars. Um, one is the scientific evidence, uh, which is important in order to succeed with, a, with an exit. All that is uh, based on the, on the R&D and the development that has uh, taken, taken place in, in the company early on, uh, the technology that we base everything on. And that has generated patents. We have a patent portfolio that is uh, quite impressive. Um, over 70 patents and three applications still running in 24 countries in the world, uh, grouped in nine different families. That is also important uh, in, in order to be successful in an exit. What we're mostly focusing on now is the building of proof, the proof of concept in market. Uh, that means that we like to be able to show uh, market shares that we have generated through sales activities. And I will talk a little bit more about that specifically this time. 
But let's first start a little bit with the evidence base, uh, one of the important pillars in, in our little exit temple. Uh, and um, this is the pipeline you see here. We have just concluded, as I said, the PM007, a pivotal uh, chronic migraine study on 136 patients in nine clinics uh, in Finland and, and Germany. This uh, generated a subgroup analysis uh, that was uh, possible to, to uh, present at the Congress in London in September. Um, and since then, we have received the full data and uh, the full data uh, actually uh, confirms and supports the subgroup data. And this subgroup analysis was actually significant uh, on the statistical side already as a subgroup analysis, which was a great surprise to us. If we skip the ongoing RENITIS uh, study for, for this session and focus on the 0, 0, 009 and 0, 010, these are two supportive, market supportive uh, studies uh, that we're conducting right now. They're about to start. Uh, 0, 0, 009 is specifically interesting as that uh, is focused on those patients that do not show response on the so-called CGRP uh, inhibitor or antagonist uh, treatment. Uh, CGRP treatment is the latest and greatest and the most expensive drug alternative there is, and therefore the reimbursement is very difficult to get. So they, these are high profile patients and they've been through everything else that there is in order to, to uh, have access to the CGRP uh, therapy. And about uh, 30 to 40 percent of those uh, come out on the other end with no results, so they don't respond to that treatment. And we are focusing on that group to see if we somehow can have uh, uh, show some, some effect with, with the chordate treatment, the cost treatment. If we do, that would be a smashing success. If we don't, that only means that we are as good as the CGRP treatment. So this is very, very interesting for us. The 010 study is a so-called uh, post-market surveillance study, which is something we have to do in the regulatory uh, commitment we have. But it's also going to give us a lot of real clinic uh, data, uh, which will be good and, and uh, folded into our uh, routine and, and what we recommend for, uh, for a regime for, for treating patients with uh, the COS uh, treatment. So that's a little bit about the pipeline and um, the study 007, uh, as I said, was, was presented in London with the German group, uh, the German clinics uh, as authors, because the subgroup was on the German patients group only. They finished a little early, so we could actually do a subgroup analysis. Came out fantastically and um, the results here are stunning. Uh, on the left side, you see the effect or the efficacy. Uh, the upper line there uh, with the triangles is uh, the placebo group or the sham treatment group. Um, and the uh, uh, black dots on the lower uh, line is, is the, uh, the active group. And as you can see, the, the, the differentiation between the placebo treatment and the active treatment is uh, very good. It's also significant, both on the six weeks mark, which was the primary endpoint, and four weeks later on the 10 weeks mark, uh, which was the follow-up period. Uh, the result, as you see, in difference between placebo and uh, and uh, active group on the on the right graph here uh, is actually increasing to become even better when you get over to to the follow up. So, uh, in average, and uh, the difference between the two, uh, almost three days of headache uh, saved out of the fifteen that you should have when you came in in average. So this is this is stunning, uh, and already, as I said, on a subgroup analysis. When we talk about response, uh, uh, responder here is, is a patient that uh, show more than 30% reduction of, of uh, headache days. Uh, we have a 40% uh, percent response in, in the active group and, and in this case, 15% response in the sham group or placebo group. That difference is significant and it's very, very large. 
Uh, it is to be suspected here, though, that that sham group is, is rather low uh, compared to other uh, studies of the same sort. And uh, I can also reveal that uh, that improved sort of uh, in, in the final results. Uh, both these groups uh, elevated uh, relatively much in, in the final results. So we have uh, the same difference approximately, but on a higher level for both these pillars. So we are extremely happy with this uh, study. It is all the support we need for, for uh, our future work here. So we can conclude that um, what's shown here in the, in, the, in the subgroup analysis, treatment effect is good or better, response as good or better, or side effects pro profile, we don't even have one, and it's not uh, medication. So this is a welcome addition too to existing treatments in the portfolio that they can, that they can um, offer the patient. So uh, let's now move over to, to focus markets here. Um, and, and we talk about focus markets because we, we do this in a sort of maybe odd way. Uh, we have selected a few markets where we have for some various reasons have a, a possibility to succeed. Um, it's Finland, it's UK, it's Germany, it's Italy, it's uh, Israel and Saudi Arabia. And as you can see here on the left side, there's quite a few chronic migraine patients in all these countries and, and uh, quite a lot of, of clinics that we can address. These are clinics that we believe are uh, accessible for us in uh, one shape or the other. Uh, it's not the total number of clinics. And, and if you sum this up, you, 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 you basically get uh, approximately 5 million patients with chronic migraine that we can have as, as an addressable market in, in over 500 clinics. Uh, now, the, the healthcare systems and reimbursement structures and everything basically differs between all these different markets. But collectively, they... they uh, serve as a very good uh, reflection on our ability to sell. Therefore, it's, it's a good mix for proof of concept building. In addition, it will also generate sales eventually, uh, which is good for us, and, and um, we will probably earn money on that eventually. But the, the importance for us is to build uh, and demonstrate that we can penetrate these markets, be them small or large, but we can show that we can get through and generate a platform. And we organize that uh, with the help of part-time uh, consultants in most of these markets uh, that work specifically for us and, and very focused on a few assignments that they all have in, in common. They approach the, the key opinion leaders and early adopters and work on them, try to build uh, early sales, try to create networks in the market that can sort of generate uh, more. Um, also work on early reimbursement uh, options, that there are such options that you can use for early technology or new technology. Uh, they manage congresses and symposiums uh, regionally and locally which is very difficult for us from Sweden to do because we don't have the understanding of the local market or culture. They also deal with regulatory uh, authorities and, and other things that's necessary for us. Uh, and finally, at the end, perhaps we're going to lift that over to, over to, to distribution. But that's a later stage. So, that was the markets, and uh, we uh, did, as I, I guess many of you noted, um, successfully concluded a rights issue here in the beginning, beginning of the year. It brought us uh, 37 uh, million Swedish crowns, um, which is extremely good. We were offering 51 million Swedish crowns, so 73% uh, uh, subscription, uh, basically. But in the current market, in the current uh, environment, in, in, the, in the stock market, this is to be deemed as, as a very good result for us. Uh, this is thanks to all our shareholders, large and small, a fantastic support which, for which I, I'm extremely grateful. Um, so this makes us capable of moving on with our plan. A plan that we will, of course, have to adjust uh, as, as uh, we didn't reach 100% of what we were asking for, but uh, in this condition, it's, it's fantastic, basically. 
So finally, uh, strategy going forward for this year. The proof of concept building is the most important. The deliverance of the scientific evidence that we have left is extremely important. And we will also continue the projects we have ongoing in both China and US for regulatory market access so that we can uh, register product and, and uh, get going in these markets also. So that actually concludes what I wanted to say today. And I'm curious, you mentioned that you are active in several markets, but how did you choose which markets to enter? It's opportunistic, basically, um, where we have reasons to believe that, that we, we, can, we can actually get uh, some results early. It, it's sometimes it's a matter of, of, of um, uh, finding the right people to work for us um, that, that we know can, can produce. Um, Italy is maybe the exception. That's the only place where we have a direct distributor. We also work with distributors in Saudi Arabia, but that is uh, due to the market structure there. It's necessary to do that. But in Italy, uh, we have, a, we have an, a distributor that basically works as a market access builder. They, they have a broader understanding of how they should create the market. But, um, and they are more uh, advanced in actually in this. They, they started early with us. Uh, the idea with market access consultants is, is something we wanted to try for a long time. Now we have our, basically our own people on the ground doing exactly what we want them to do, uh, albeit on, 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 on part-time, but it's much more effective, uh, actually. Uh, so so we, we picked markets where we think we can have a, a nice mix of different types of healthcare systems, private versus uh, public, different um, types of reimbursement systems, also private, public, uh, charity, uh, uh, a lot out-of-pocket pay, which is another way of paying for, for healthcare, as a matter of fact. So, so we, we have a palette now of various types of markets, which is basically how we build the proof of concept, to be able to say that, well, doesn't really matter how the, how the, how the market is uh, designed, we have still been able to generate these market shares. I see. And you also mentioned US and China. What's the plan going forward there? Well, China is a joint venture um, with, with, a, with a company in, in, in Shanghai. Um, it's a Renitis only for now. And, and um, um, when we now submitted the, 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 the uh, application for, for um, product uh, registration is submitted, if and when that becomes um, approved, then the joint venture company will go ahead and, and, and start marketing. Uh, it's really all in their court. We, we do not really mix in on that. Uh, it, it said from the beginning when we started this journey that this is all going to be Chinese decisions. So we're not involved in it. US, uh, for now, we don't have any plans to enter the market in the US, but we do have plans to conclude the, the regulatory reports so, so that we can get product approval in, 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 in the US by, by FDA. Uh, in order to have it ready, because we think, uh, given the time it takes to do that, we think that's a good thing to add to the value in our exit proposition to whoever is going to buy the company. I see. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you very much. Thank you.